So let's continue. So we have managed to define this projection matrix, PA. So remember that projection operation is a general operation mapping a given point to a constraint set. But this set is span of some vectors and this becomes this mapping as given by a matrix. And of course our distance measure is usual Euclidean distance in this case. Now, what should I do? Well, if A transpose A is invertible, I have this as my solution. Just a note, if A transpose A is not invertible, then what will happen? So I'm running into a difficulty because if this is invertible, there is a unique solution and the solution is this, it's clear. But if it's not invertible, now I have some cases. But this is just a note, you don't have to, you know, pay so much uh, attention to this detail because this is somewhat more advanced. So this equation system always has a solution, whether this is invertible or not. Well, A transpose A is not invertible. There is equation system, equation system, has a solution, actually it has infinitely, num infinitely many number of solutions, since, so when do we say equation system has a solution? Well, has always a solution because, well, I'll be writing like this, range space of A transpose A coincides with range space of A transpose. So this is set of points brain space, I think we have studied this, but it's a matrix, it's a different matrix. So this is A transpose A, and it's just A transpose. What is the meaning of this? Well, what, if this is the case, whatever the B is, the given vector outside of this span, whatever the B is, then the vector on the right hand side, the range space of A transpose, whatever the B is, can be expressed as a linear combination of this matrix's columns, if this is indeed the case. So you can show that range space of A transpose A is equal to range space of A transpose for, you know, this is a general mathematical fact. But how can you show this? This is a little bit more complicated, but there is, this is true, and this is the reason that there is always a solution. So let me write brief notes for maybe students with more knowledge in such things. A transpose A is called gram matrix and A transpose A is invertible if in our case, A matrix is full column rank. What's the meaning of this? IE A1, A2, AK are linearly independent. Okay? Actually, this is something we expect. If this is indeed the case, there is a unique way of, if these vectors a1, a2, ak are linearly independent, there is a unique way, there is only one way of expressing any vector in the span, if they are linearly independent. Well, that is a mathematical fact. Gram matrix is invertible for such a case. Actually, gram matrix is another way of checking this, you know, linear independence. You may think about it also like that. Okay. So, okay, a brief note about this. Again, this is for, you know, some advanced uh, knowledge, you may say, things like that. Showing range space of A transpose A is equal to range space of A transpose can be a little difficult if you apply, you know, uh, some set arguments and so on. But this can be trivial. K 
can be trivial. What we call by singular value decomposition. So if A is equal to U B Hermitian, okay, then by substituting, I won't be explaining this, but just making a note. Instead of A, if you write it over here by singular value decomposition, then A transpose A becomes V sigma square V transpose and A transpose becomes let me write this over here transpose V sigma U transpose okay so since if you know SVD singular value decomposition then you know that these are unitary or orthogonal matrices so they don't affect this range space calculation you see that the range space is affected by these two matrices okay and because this sigma matrix the singular values of this a matrix this is a, this is a diagonal matrix this is also a diagonal matrix so this is a diagonal matrix the same matrix squared so this is the reason that they have you know the same range space if you don't understand this I mean, no, no problems with this course. But uh, if you know the meaning of SVD, maybe you are a PhD student, maybe you are working with SVDs and so on, then SVD is a very powerful tool that you can use in these proofs. But in general, in exams or in some, you know, uh, mathematical educational, I say, courses and so on, you don't use SVD because SVD is blocking some of these you know, intricate arguments and it's giving you the immediate result in any way and the proof of SVD is evading us so this becomes not a proof because SVD is proved at the end of many lectures and so on but please remember uh, I was watching MIT's open courseware notes Gilbert Strang's open courseware notes and Gilbert Strang he has said that SVD is the single most powerful tool of linear algebra and it has some numerical properties, it has some, as you see, um, proof, utility, and so on. So SVD is especially important for our purposes. So this part is not very critical, but what we have learned is maybe, if A transpose A is invertible, that is gram matrix is invertible, that means that these vectors in question, they are linearly independent, of course, I have such a solution. If they are not independent, then find a linearly independent set spanning the same space, isn't it? Maybe in this space, AK is a linear combination of A1 and A2. Then eliminate AK, don't take into account. Find a set, this is called the basis, spanning the subspace. Okay? Okay, that is it. So once you have found that, then you will be replacing that, you know, a basis spanning this subspace with this replace A. So you will be updating your A matrix such that at the, after the update you have all linearly independent vectors. Now we are done with projection matrices but I would like to say something a little bit more on this. So let me erase this part this part, but keep the definition. So this is this extra part. So let me write this P, let me write A. So this is A, A transpose A inverse, A transpose. Am I right? I have this. So this becomes my projection matrix, one more time. And now I'm free to erase this part. So let me give some information about orthogonal projectors. A matrix P 
is an orthogonal projector if it satisfies some problems with these markers. Let's see if it satisfies number one p square is equal to p. Number two, P transpose is equal to P. Now I have two conditions. If it satisfies these two conditions, then it's called an orthogonal, orthogonal projector. Well, this is projection condition. Can you explain why this is a projection condition? P square is equal to P. Okay, how about this? This, this will be the orthogonality condition. Okay, so let's think about P square is equal to P. Now, if I operate on B by P, then I get the projection result. If I operate one more time on this projection result, then it will be p squared times p, isn't it? But I have already mapped it to the span. So it won't be moving elsewhere. This is at a zero distance from this. You know. So if you apply projection operation twice, then the second operation does not do anything. That is that fact. p squared is equal to p. Because, let me, since p squared times, let's say, b is equal to p times p times b. But this is already in the range. This is already in the, let me write, let me say pa for our case. This is already element of range space of a. So if you project this vector already in the range space of a, this is b star, nothing happens because you are at a zero distance you get the same vector back okay so this is my b star so i get b star back okay so this is number one that is the orthogonality condition so this makes a lot of sense how about this one so two well a matrix is called symmetric or in complex valued case Hermitian symmetric in that case let me put it in brackets if A transpose is equal to A or A Hermitian is equal to A so what is this Hermitian operation? So this is a Hermitian is you take the transpose and then you take the conjugate of every element. Okay? So this conjugate transpose, you may say. So in electrical engineering, as you know, complex valued numbers do lots of work. Okay? So we have to study these complex valued cases also. For the complex valued cases, things can be a little bit more uh, different, but not so much different. So you can treat them in your mind by just changing this T to H in many cases. But I will explain if there is an issue, uh, I'll, I will try to explain that. For example, in this case, if you change this T to H, it becomes, it becomes Hermitian. Then this becomes orthogonal, orthogonal projector for the complex valued case. Okay? Complex valued, uh, let's say, vectors. So question. So what kind of projector is this? Is this an orthogonal projector? This one. So PA A A transpose A A transpose Let me write a question. Is PA an orthogonal projector. Okay. Now, how can I answer that? Now, I should check. 
is PA squared is equal to PA. Okay, I should take the square of this. Now, how can I do that? So A, let me write PA. So this is PA. Let me write it one more time. So this is PA. This is also PA. So if I do this, if I multiply this, now multiplication is for matrices, it's associative, meaning that I don't have to pay attention to these brackets. I can erase these brackets. Now, how about this? I can, I don't need this, but let me put this bracket over here. Now, this cancels this, because this matrix I have assumed it is invertible. Well, if it's not invertible, find an invertible, you know, find a linearly independent, uh, find the span of this A matrix and to find a set of vectors covering that span. Okay? Spanning. That is it. Now, if I do this cancellation, what do I see? Then this calculation, this is equal to A. This is cancelled. A transpose. But this is also equal to PA itself. So indeed, this is satisfied. Okay? So I'm happy with this. This is satisfied. Well, no surprises. This is supposed to be a projection operation, and this is the projection condition that is satisfied. Number two, PA transpose, is it equal to PA? So how can I do this? A, A transpose A, inverse A transpose transpose. So this is PA. So I'm, as you see, I'm trying, I'm operating on this and trying to reach this one. So how do you take the transpose of a matrix? If I have, please remember, if you have A, B, C matrices in transpose, this is C transpose, B transpose, A transpose. Okay? That is the way you take the transpose. Similarly, if you take the inverse of this, if they are all invertible, that is the way you take this inverse. Okay? That is it. Now, let me erase this, this you know, fact. Now I have A. And so on. So take the transpose of this matrix, you get A. Take the transpose of this, but uh, you can interchange the inverse operation and the transpose operation. This is already symmetric, so you get the same matrix inverse. Transpose of this, you get this. Okay. So obviously this is PA. I'm very happy. Why? My projection operation it turned out to be an orthogonal, orthogonal projection. Okay. Very good. Now this orthogonality condition it's somewhat special to us. So the answer for this one is yes. Okay. So let me write something about this orthogonality condition. Remember, if A transpose is equal to A, then A matrix has orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay? This is an important fact for our purposes. A transpose A has an orthogonal. I won't be proving this, but you know, there is even a more general theorem. A more general theorem. Says that for, you know, more information. If A times 
A transpose is equal to A transpose times A then A matrix is called a normal matrix and it has orthogonal eigenvectors. So this is very this is more general because if this matrix is symmetric, this is clearly normal. If A matrix is symmetric, then let me move this if you wish I can because I'm using the same A. Let me move this change this to M just for clarity. So if M is equal to A and A satisfies this kind of property, then obviously, you know, that is satisfied because this is like M squared over here. This is M squared over here, provided that M is equal to M transpose. So it's trivial satisfied. So in this case, I automatically get this result. But it's more general. For example, uh, if A is, there is also this concept of orthogonal matrices. I will explain a little further. If A transpose A is identity, let's say that A is again the same kind of matrix. So this is N by K matrix. So this is A is an orthogonal matrix. Okay, A transpose A is an orthogonal matrix. So what's the meaning of this? Well, remember A transpose A was Gramian, isn't it? So we have just said so, Gramian matrix and so on. So what does A transpose A do? A transpose A So as you see, this is A1 transpose A1, A1 transpose A2, A1 transpose AK. A2 transpose A1, A2 transpose A2, A2 transpose AK. So this is nothing but matrix of inner products, as you see, Gramian matrix. transpose A is equal to identity matrix, what do I have? Well, first of all, this is equal to 1. This is equal to 1, this is equal to and all the rest of diagonal terms, they're all equal to 0 because it's an identity matrix. So this is K by K, as you see, identity matrix. So maybe I should say this is like an orthonormal because it is normalized such that the norm of this vector, A1 vector, is equal to 1, if this satisfies this. But what is interesting is that if this matrix is an identity matrix, then these two, this entry is equal to 0, this entry is equal to 0, that says that A1 is orthogonal to A2, A1 is orthogonal to AK. So you can see that pairwise, all of these vectors are orthogonal to each other. And this is the reason that this is called an you know, orthogonal matrix, because all of these vectors uh, given in the columns of this matrix, they're orthogonal. Okay. Okay, so this is about normal matrix. Oh, okay, why I have told you so? If you have such a case, A transpose A, and if this is like a square matrix, so that you can calculate its eigenvectors, then clearly A transpose A is equal to identity, then they are square matrices right now. Then this is also satisfied because this is identity. This will be also identity. Okay. 
then it shows that orthogonal matrices they also have, you know, uh, uh, we may say orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay, this special kind of matrices. And let me write also a brief note I have just remembered. For the complex case, let me write it over here. For the complex case, we use unitary matrices instead of orthogonal matrices. There is a terminal change. I mean, instead of orthogonal, we say unitary for the complex case. That is it. For the complex case, you have Hermitians over here. So A Hermitian A is equal to identity, and that will be the definition of unitary matrices. Okay. equal to PA transpose. So it is a symmetric matrix. That means that, one more time, orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay. So let's study eigen decomposition of PA. Okay. So how can I study this eigen decomposition? So A, eigenvalues. So how can I find the eigenvalues of this PA from these properties and so on? Well, remember that PA square is equal to PA. How about this? Then PA square minus PA is equal to zero matrix. Am I right? They're identical, so it's the zero matrix. How about this? If I operate by an eigenvector, EK, if I multiply this matrix by an eigenvector, EK, so what is this EK? So P times EK is PA lambda K times EK. So this is eigenvector, this is eigenvalue. Okay. So this is the kth, you may say, eigenvector. So what do I get? Well, right hand side is easy because zero matrix times a vector. So I get a zero vector over here. How about this one? This is PA, PA, EK, minus P A E K. Am I right? Is equal to zero. But since this is an eigenvector, this is lambda K E K. This is also lambda K E K. But there's another P A over here. So if I one more time operate with this, this is lambda K squared times E K. So at the end, if I do this calculation, I get the following lambda k square lambda k e k is equal to all zero vector so remember these are n by one i'm in the n-dimensional space this is one of the eigenvectors this is small k one of them okay so i'm at this two. so how can this be so this eigenvector 
Well, it is supposed to be, this multiplication has to be a zero vector. What are my chances? This vector can be all zero. If it's an all zero vector, well, it's not a, it's, this should be an eigenvector. Well, zero is the trivial case. I'm looking for a non-trivial eigenvector. And I know that they exist because there are some orthogonal eigenvectors. They cover, um, they, eigenvectors diagonalize this matrix, essentially. Okay, so what are the cases? What, what do I see is the following? This should be equal to zero. No other cases. So I get the following. Then the lambda k has to be equal to zero or one. Okay. So I see that the projection matrices, so I can will use of the projection matrix. Of this projection matrices, either zero or one. Okay. B. Let's look at eigen vectors. I will call the eigen vectors as E K. So I know that I have, let's say, n of them. So P A is an n by n matrix. It maps a point in R n to R n. Okay, n by n matrix. So how can I write this? Then the eigen decomposition. E k is lambda k e k for all of these k values. Okay. So how about this? P a e1 e2 this is the last one, E n, and E one, E two, E n, and lambda one, lambda two, lambda n. This is all zero. This is all zero. So I have k. Sorry, I have n equations over here. Instead of writing those equations separately for k is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, so on. So let's focus on first column on the left hand side. The first column is nothing but PA times the first column of this. Second column is PA times second column of this. So PA times the first column is this, when k is equal to 1, is equal to, what's the first column of this one? Well, do you remember we have discussed this? So these are all zeros. So I should multiply to get the first column by the first column of this matrix. But this first column is, so lambda 1 is multiplying this, 0 is multiplying the second column, 0 is multiplying the end column, because this is just a linear combination weights of these columns. So lambda 1 times E1 is the first column of this matrix. That is the thing that I want. Second column, PA times E2. And these are all zero. So this is zero, zero. So it's a diagonal matrix. So lambda 2 times E2. So instead of writing equations separately, over here I'm writing in matrix form. Then PA is equal to, let me call this E matrix in our usual form. This is E matrix. This is E. These are eigenvalues. So it's a diagonal matrix. That is it. Then I can write P A S E E inverse. Okay. So how do I know that this is invertible? So in general, if you have a and linearly independent eigenvectors, meaning that this matrix is diagonal. It's, it's, if they are linearly independent, n of them, then this matrix is invertible. Okay? That is the case when this matrix is diagonal. Sometimes matrices are not diagonalized. There are some special Jordan canonical forms and so on. But for this one, we are sure about this. We, are even, uh, know, we even know that these vectors are, eigenvectors are, you know, they are orthonormal. 
like remember the Gramian discussions, these vectors, eigenvectors E1 and E2, they are uh, orthogonal to each other. So what does that mean? So sorry, let me move transpose over here, doesn't matter. So if you move then, if you multiply by E inverse from right, E transpose is equal to E inverse. Or you can see that this is acting like an inverse matrix. Transposition operation acting like an inverse matrix. Then I get E this. Again, we are making use of the knowledge that we haven't proved. Because it's a normal matrix. Okay. In other words, it's a symmetric matrix. Then it has an orthogonal eigenvectors. If eigenvectors are orthogonal, then I end up with this. Okay. So this is the general case. If they are not orthogonal, then this is the general. If they are orthogonal, then I end up with this simplified for me to transpose. Okay. So let's move ahead. Then PA is equal to, so how can I write this one? E1, E2, EN, I have lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda N, and, okay, I have E1 transpose, E2 transpose, EN transpose over here. Do you agree? Because this is E, diagonal matrix, E transpose. They're all zero over here. Okay, so how can I write this one? I will be expressing this like this. Let me write N, 1 to N, EK, or let me move lambda K over here, lambda K, E k, e k Hermitian, let's so transpose for this case. So what is this? So it's possible to write this product in terms of this. So how can I see that one? Well, one way of looking at it at it is the following. So this is nothing but lambda 1 times E1 transpose, lambda 2 times E2 transpose, this is lambda n times E n transpose, because this and that. Okay. So this is a matrix as you see. So first row is scaling it's not combining any other rows, but just scaling the first row by lambda 1. Similarly, second row is doing the same thing. So now I should multiply these two matrices. This is a matrix. This is an M by N matrix. So this is also an M by N matrix. Okay. So I should multiply this blue matrix with this, let's say, black colored matrix. So how can I do this? Well, this is like somewhat underappreciated fact in linear algebra. This is the reason that I want to mention this. Let me write it over here. If you have A1, A2, and You can write it like this. So why can you see this immediately? So first of all, so this is nothing but A1. So this is, first of all, this is a, again N by N matrix. 
This is also an M by N matrix. This matrix is very special. This is called rank 1 matrix. Okay? We can explain it further later, but this is an M by N, M by N rank 1 matrix. So why is it like that? Well, if you wish, maybe uh, operate by a vector x over here. So this, uh, let's say I operate by x, if you wish. Then I should operate by x also over here. So what do I get? Inner product of b1 with x, inner product with b2 with x. This is just a number. Inner product is a number. This is also a number after this operation. Then this inner product result is scaling a1. This inner product result is scaling a2. And if you do this, it's exactly the same. This is one way of seeing it. Since this is valid for any x, so then you always have this equality. Okay. Something like that. Now I'm applying the same thing. This is a column vector. This is a row vector. This is my a1. This is my b1. This is my b1. So this is a1. This is b1. So a1, b1, b1 transpose. Okay. Again, it's an n by n matrix, and that is it. So this is another way of multiplying matrices. So this is, you may think, if uh, this is writing a matrix in terms of rank 1 matrices. Okay. So this is a rank 1. By this way, I can decompose this PA matrix or you know, this product in terms of a sum of rank 1 matrices. Okay. Very good. So I'm very happy. But what else do I know? I know that this is lambda k is either 0 or 1. Okay. Lambda k is 0 or 1. Then about this, if PA projects to a space of dimension k that is the space, the projection space is the projection space is a range of A matrix okay and this A matrix has you know, it has K, capital K, linearly independent vectors. Then it has a dimension of K that, actually I'm talking about, still talking about this space. Then you can see that there will be, maybe we can prove it a little further, but this is somewhat clear. At the end of this projection result, I'll be getting an element of this space. So I, I can get A1, A2, AK. So if I can get, you know, up to A1 to AK, so at least it has dimension K, okay? Capital K. The last one is capital K. Then what do I get? So, PA is equal to very nice, and let me put k this time, k, 1 to k, oh, maybe then I should move this to lambda n, okay, ek, ek, this, so how about this, so I'm assuming that lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda capital K is equal to 1 lambda K plus 1 lambda K plus 2 lambda N is equal to 0 okay so I'm assuming that first K eigenvalues is equal to 1 first K eigenvectors are spanning the space and so on okay so this becomes the eigen decomposition of this operator. What else?
So I'm covering these operators, but during this uh, eigen decomposition operation and so on. But my goal is also studying, you know, orthogonal matrices, you know, eigen decompositions, rank concept, etc. If you are feeling uncomfortable about these concepts, please review these concepts. Okay. These concepts are you know, very basic concepts. You should have some intuitive understanding uh, on them. And furthermore, you should be somewhat like fluent in their calculations. Okay, so this is uh, the end of this. So at the end, what do I get? If I can do this eigen decomposition, I get something interesting actually. These E vectors, you may consider them like that. Well, let me have another color. They are orthogonal vectors. This is like E1, this is like E2, this is like E3, and so on. They are orthogonal vectors because these are the eigenvectors, and eigenvectors are orthogonal, and they cover the same space. Okay? Well, that is it. Now, you may wonder. Um, if so question question if the span of a1 an is represented by a different basis such as, for example, E1, E2. Now you see that because in this span, I can have orthogonal vectors also. This would be actually, you will see, simplifying my life. Okay. Is there a change in PA, projection, projection uh, operator, projection PA matrix? Because you may think that PA is defined like this, A, A transpose, A inverse. You may think that this is a property of the A. But it seems that this is not the property of the A, but this is the property of this you know, space. So A is just a representation of the space. E is another representation of the space. Maybe they would be giving the same you know, projection matrix. Okay. Then maybe I should call not A this one. I should write it like range space of A. But it will be complicating my life to write that. So let me keep it like this if that is the case. So what was the question? If the span of this is represented by a different basis, such as this one, is there a change in the PA matrix? Okay. PA matrix is this. So how can I answer this? So let's assume that there is you know, so this is A basis, so this is A1, A2, A, I have K of them, spanning this, so this is K basis, so this is, so this B basis, sorry, B1, B2, BK, okay? So what's that mean? Now, uh, maybe I have repeated this too many times, but A1, a2, AK, B1, B2, BK, and this is like X11, X121, X1N, XNN, N1, so on. So this is X matrix. This is N by N. Everything is N by N. Uh, this is, sorry, this is n by k. Sorry, this is k by k. Okay. I have 1k. So what's going on? So let's assume that this a1, this vector, is, can be represented as a linear combination of these b vectors. I have k of them, and there are k 
ways like that. Similarly, A2 can be represented as a linear combination of these vectors. These are the vectors, these are the linear combination weights, as you see. So, clearly, if this matrix is invertible, if X matrix is invertible, I can, from this A, I can generate a B. From B, I can generate an A, because I can move this matrix to the left, to the right, so I will be, you know, I can, by multiplying this, I can put it over here. So I can generate from one basis another basis. So the question is, if I have such a case, then if I insert this, you know, A over here, then PA becomes, instead of, you know, A, I'll be using this. Bx, Bx transposes x transpose b transpose b transpose then um, I'm over here bx okay so I get something like that so how can I process this one now again bx so I should take the inverse of this matrix x inverse So this matrix inverse. So this is transpose and inverse. This transpose over here. Sorry, this is x transpose. B transpose instead of A. Okay, I have something like that. X transpose, B transpose. This is this two. So what we see is the following. Again, there is this cancellation of axis. So what I see is the following. I see this as B. B transpose B inverse and B transpose. So I get the same form, independent of X. So if you select X as identity, you get A's. If you select as in any way that you like, a different basis, you get the same matrix. It's the same form. So this shows us that this projection operation is independent of this representation, as we have expected. Okay? Because these linear combination weights does not play any role in this calculation. You always get the same result. Now, one last thing. Complementary. projector. So let me write it like this. PA complement, complementary projector, is defined as, so let me write I minus this, PA. So this identity matrix minus PA. So this is, so this is projector supposed to be a projector to the um, orthogonal space of range space of A. So this time it's projecting to the orthogonal space. P First of all, is this a projector? Question. Is this a projector or not? Okay. So it has to satisfy these two axioms. Number one, PA perp, perpendicular, square, should be equal to PA perp. Is it equal to this? So if I take the square of this then, let's accept this, 
definition. I minus 2PA plus PA square. Am I right? I is the identity matrix. If you do the multiplication, you get this. Then PA square is, because it's a projector, I minus PA, because it's PA. So indeed, this is then equal to, by definition, PA perpendicular. Okay, so it satisfies this. Two, so this is satisfied. Is PA perpendicular transpose is PA perpendicular transpose. Well, this is much easier to see. If you take the transpose of this, identity transpose is identity. PA transpose is, by definition, PA transpose is again PA, and we are done. Okay? There is nothing else to do. So that one is, that one is also satisfied. Okay, so observation, let's say, observe that PA, PA perpendicular, PA perpendicular and PA is equal to zero. Well, because the definition is this is identity minus PA. If you operate this, you know, you get PA minus PA squared, but PA squared is PA. So you get this, okay, is equal to zero. So this is indeed the case. So what does that mean? The projection spaces of PA and PA perpendicular are orthogonal to each other. What, why, what do I mean by that? If you have vector B, if you first project it by PA, you get this. If you project it by the orthogonal complement of this, now you are moving it to zero. Okay? Zero origin, because you, you don't get anything else. Well, the reason is the following. PA is projecting to the span of these, let's say, three orthogonal vectors. E1, E2, E3. It is spanning the space. PA complement is projecting to the span of the other, other vectors, E4, E5, E6. What do I mean by that? So PA, as I have said, it's projecting to the span of these EKs with you know, eigenvalues 1, and the complement is projecting to the eigen, to, to the other ones. Okay. You can easily see this if you check the eigenvalue. What is the eigenvalue of this? So first of all, what are the eigenvectors of this one? Okay, let me write this one. Note that eigenvectors of PA complement are also EK, these EKs that we have discussed, because, you know, okay, you can easily check this, and eigenvalues of PA complement R 1 minus lambda K. Okay? So why this is the case? Since PA complement times EK, let me write this, is equal to I minus PA EK. So this is well, this is EK, 1 minus lambda K, EK. Because this lambda K, EK, this is just this. These are, you know, that is the end. So what I see is that, indeed, this eigenvector, this is the eigenvector of PA, is also an eigenvector of PA complement, but these eigenvalues are changed. Eigenvalues of P 
A perpendicular. So what do I see? If these three vectors are spanning A, range of A matrix, then the rest of these eigenvectors are spanning the space orthogonal to this. So this is the reason that I have this equality, okay? Because they are projecting to the orthogonal spaces. That is the reason. So if I go back to this picture one more time, now, this is our projection point. Let me mark this with blue then. PA times B. How about this one? This is, let me mark this with red. This is our, you may say, this error. So this is PA complement times B. Why that is the case? Well, okay, let's accept it like this. This is PA complement times B. Then addition of these two vectors, this plus that, gives me B. Of course, this vector, this red vector, is not over there, but it's back to this vector. So this red mapping. So this is PA complement mapping. So this B is mapped to this red vector. This green is mapping to... Let me mark this with green then. Okay, this is also green. So you have this green vector plus red vector equal to B. Okay, that is it. So, what do I mean by green vector plus red vector is equal to B? These are very simple facts, but you should be, this is the reason that I'm telling you, you should be somewhat you know, fluent in these kind of things, because some of these results are indeed very simple. Check that. Well, this is this. And let me have my red vector, let me call this E, something like this. This is times B. Okay. Now I claim the addition of these. So this is the red vector, this is the other vector, is equal to B. Well, the reason is, if you add them up, but this is equal to identity matrix because of this definition. Okay, so I see that. Now, if I have a vector B, if I can decompose this vector in an orthogonal basis in terms of E's, so E1, E2, E3 is spanning this uh, range space of A, projection space. I span by PA matrix to this, I, I project B vector to this point by PA operator, then by the PA complement operator, I get the other vector which is span to the complementary space. Okay, so essentially I am decomposing this vector into two. Vector number one in the span of range, range space of A, vector number two in the uh, vector in the span orthogonal to this. Okay, their sum is the original vector itself. Okay, let me see. Okay, from this point on, from this point on, we will continue next time. I think that is good enough for our purposes for now. Okay, thank you very much.